Hi, my name is Paul Sargent. Welcome once again to AP Euro Bit by Bit, in which I'm taking modern European history and breaking it down into small pieces so that you can better understand it. Today's question, what was humanism? Let's take a look. So to begin with, humanism was an intellectual movement. That's why there's an ism on the end. Those three letters signify a belief in something, and throughout European history, we were overloaded with isms. Why? Well, Europe is a land of ideas and action. Generally speaking, ideas are formulated before actions are taken, and that's going to be a constant theme throughout the modern age. So humanism, or Renaissance humanism as it's also referred to, was the renewed belief in the value and power of the individual. Throughout the Middle Ages, the general concept of man's place in the universe was one of obedience. People were expected to live their lives to worship God, and they were asked by the church to earn their way into heaven by following the sacraments and through good works. In the 14th century, intellectuals began to question this purely religious view of life on earth. They studied the classical languages of Greek and Latin in order to read the wisdom of writers from the ancient world. When Constantinople fell to the Ottomans in 1453, many of those ancient texts and the scholars who kept them made their way to Italy, which reintroduced a treasure trove of writings to Western Europe. So suddenly, the ideas of ancient writers become available to a whole new audience. Ancient values such as civic virtue became subjects of conversation. And as more people started reading these texts, the demand for lay education, you know, for schools run outside the realm of monastic communities and outside of the church, well, that increased. Wealthy families began to support the schools and send their children to the schools to learn Greek and Latin and gain access to ancient ideas. The problem was that some of those ideas came into conflict with the teaching and doctrine of the Catholic Church. Humanism had at its core the belief in two things, individualism and secularism, that is, a departure from religion. However, it's important to understand that humanists didn't really reject Catholicism and they didn't reject religion. What they wanted to do is they wanted to take the ideas of the ancients and use education to better understand the world while still retaining their Catholic beliefs. Now maybe what I said just doesn't make sense, but if you bear with me, I think it'll all kind of come together. What we need to do now that we understand what humanism is, is to let, take a look at four of the most influential humanist thinkers. Petrarch is generally regarded as the father of the Renaissance. Writing in the 14th century, he was the first guy who looked at the Middle Ages as a period of darkness and promoted the belief that medieval culture was ignorant of classical ideals. He was totally wrong about this, and every medieval scholar today can come up with a long list of reasons why he was wrong. But Petrarch understood that new movements need to set themselves apart from the current society, so he might have overstated things a little bit. He scoured the monasteries of Europe for ancient texts and promoted the study of classical Latin. We're talking about the time of Julius Caesar, that sort of uh, period. He also promoted the use of something called the vernacular. Those are the spoken languages throughout Europe. It, in his case, it was Italian. Uh, he promoted these in writing instead of the medieval Latin that, that monks and church scholars were using at the time. By the 15th century, writers began identifying themselves as humanist. Lorenzo Valla from Rome dedicated his adult life to use his humanist education to help the church. He even tried to get the job of papal secretary, but was unsuccessful. So he set off around Europe intensely studying Greek and Latin, finding every text he possibly could. And he pushed the concept that classical Latin, especially that of about the 200 years surrounding uh, the birth of Christ, as being the purest, most beautiful form of Latin in history. Now, we all know that, that languages change over time. And he wanted to restore Latin to its rightful position over the vernacular. Now, Valla's deep understanding of Latin and its development over time led to some trouble. His studies brought to his attention a thing called the Donation of Constantine. This is a document in which the Roman Emperor Constantine in the 4th century gave vast amounts of land to the Catholic Church. Now, what Valla found was that the Latin used in the document didn't match the Latin being used during Constantine's time, but it was actually a form of language being used around 400 years later. In other words, he proved through linguistic analysis that the document was a fraud. 
Now that didn't make his beloved Catholic Church happy, but ironically, after many years of criticism, he was named Papal Secretary in 1447, proving that humanism had won over tradition and orthodoxy. In the later 15th century, scholarly interest in the works of Plato surged, and the major figure in promoting Plato was the Florentine, from Florence, the Florentine writer Marsilio Ficino. Under the patronage of Cosimo de, Cosimo de Medici, Ficino created and promoted the movement known as Neoplatonism. Neo, you may know, means new. So whenever you encounter movements whose name starts with Neo, understand that means a revival of an old idea. But anyway, so Ficino's Neoplatonism attempted to take Plato's ideas and join them with Catholicism. And it had two major components. The world was organized hierarchically with plants at the bottom and God at the top. Man was in the middle. And man represented the link between the material realm and the spiritual realm. All right, second, he had this theory of platonic love, and it held that just as all people are connected in their humanity through love, so too all parts of the universe are connected through love. Okay, so that's three writers. Just one more to go. By the late 15th century, humanism had been developing for almost 100 years. It was then that Pico della Mirandola wrote one of the most famous humanist pieces of all time. It was titled Oration on the Dignity of Man, and in it, Mirandola combined nuggets of what he called universal truth from many writers to come up with God's message to all of mankind. He believed that God had created unlimited potential in people, or as he put it, to him it is granted to have whatever he chooses, to be whatever he wills. In other words, God gave us all the potential to become whatever we want. Mirandola had successfully achieved the goals of humanism. He had reconciled the pagan ideas of ancient writers with the revelations of Catholicism. But that didn't mean that humanism was finished. It would spread to Northern Europe and find new scholars with new ideas. More on that another time. So to review, humanism was the revival of interest in the classical ideals of Greece and Rome. And humanists used their education to translate the works of classical writers and use them to better understand the universe and man's place in it. Humanism gave us the foundation for most of modern Western thought. And so on that note, we've come to the end of the video. I hope that you've understood the concept of Renaissance humanism, and please subscribe so that you get notified whenever I post new videos. Thanks for watching AP Euro Bit by Bit. My name's Paul Sargent. Thanks for watching.